Hey guys, this is Brad from Blue Nile Farm. You know, for many, many years, I never had a personal shop until recently. And I can finally converted some barn space into a shop. And because mechanics have been killing me over the years, I decided to try to play around with some of the equipment and do some of my own repairs myself. Well, a friend of mine gave me an oxygen acetylene tank uh, kit and with a torch. And, you know, I haven't used this stuff in over 40 years since high school. And uh, I kind of wanted to get back into it and learn. And I learned a lot of good things in a short period of time. And I've been able to utilize it. And I want to pass that on because I am truly a beginner. But just like most people, you know, we just get a, a torch and a tip. And we go at it and we try to figure it out ourselves. But I want to kind of pass along things that I've learned real quickly. And hopefully it'll help somebody out um, in their quest of using these. So... Stay tuned and I'll cover a few things about selecting the correct tips and how to set your gauges uh, with the proper levels depending on what you're using. So stay tuned. So why do you think it's important to have an oxygen acetylene uh, setup? Well, for one, one thing I've learned as the, I grow in the equipment, and I have a lot of equipment, that when it comes down to doing my own repairs or even having a mechanic do the repairs, most of the time when we're trying to get something apart, it doesn't come apart. So being able to apply heat to frozen parts and kind of get them unstuck is really important. And, you know, again, you know, once I bought these tanks, you know, I wound up having to buy what's called a rosebud, which is basically a tip end, which basically produces a large amount of heat. And it does a better job of heating a surface, especially a larger surface, than a normal tip size would. So I wound up buying a rosebud. And uh, that has already been used on numerous occasions and uh, been a big, huge help. So, but again, taking parts apart or cutting pieces off, this is what these things are for. And there's no, everybody that owns a farm, almost everybody, especially when they get into a good quantity piece of equipment, they all have this oxygen acetylene setup. And I understand why now because, again, doing my own piece of equipment. So the best thing is getting yourself set up for success. And I think that as long as you uh, learn to use these things well, they will definitely serve you well, especially in a farming environment. If you're just working on cars and have a shop, again, this works out well for you too. And I've also started to get into welding. So oxygen acetylene and welding goes kind of hand in hand. So this is really a good setup to start with and relatively not that expensive to get started. So I suggest if you do have a farm, or especially the bigger you get, the more likely you're going to need something like this, especially if you're doing your own work. And uh, I'm, I'm finally glad that I got an opportunity to use this because it definitely makes a difference. You know, and farm machinery are infamous for having big bolts and big parts, and a lot of times things are frozen on because they get stuck with rust and weather or age, and you need something like this to get the job done, and it's, it's great to have one. So that's the rationale behind why. I finally got an oxygen acetylene tank set up and it's really doing well for me so far. So the reason why I started using these, this torch set is that uh, I had a tub grinder that I wanted to do a complete rebuild on and I finally found somebody that could kind of help me through the process and to rebuild it. But to do so, we'd have to cut it apart and really remanufacture it. Well, my girlfriend's kid is a welder, so that took care of the welding aspect of things. And, but we had to cut it apart, so I was familiar with cutting back in the day, and so does the, the kid, and we started cutting this thing apart, and I got to finally use my oxygen acetylene tank that I've had um, sitting dormant for at least a couple years. So as I started this quest, I wound up cutting very, you know, not real thick stuff, maybe not even a quarter inch or uh, three sixteenths, nothing really heavy, uh, but no bigger than an eighth inch and what I when I got this unit it had a number two tip on it what I started to realize over time doing a little research that the tip which is a number two is good to cut one inch to two inch uh, p thick pieces of metal so with that said I started to learn about tips and basically the tip size and the relationship of that tip to the your sayings of your oxygen and the settings of your acetylene are going to all dictate on the tip size. And that's one of the biggest questions I had when I started is, what do I set my gauges at? So 
With that said, the easy answer is whatever your tip size is, and depending on the brand that you have as far as your gauges go, and the tip sizes that your uh, brand that you have, like I have a Harris here, I need to get tips that are related to the Harris, and that would work for a Harris. So the tip sizes are triple lot, which is zero, 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 three zeros, double lot, which is two zeros, just the zero, ones, twos, and, and then a few other numbers above. But for myself, that's where I ended. So we're going to take you through the sizes that you would need. So what's nice is that if you're looking to get into this, uh, normally there's different brands that are out there. There's Victor, there's Harris, uh, there's a bunch of other brands that are out there. And what you need to do is find out what that manufacturer, uh, based on the tip size they use, is going to recommend. And like with the Harris, there actually is a chart that they promote on their website that you can look at and then know exactly where you should set your gauges. So I'm going to put up right now that chart so you can actually see. And it will give you the idea that depending on the size and thickness of the metal that you're actually cutting is the tip size that you should have. And it also gives you the recommendation of your oxygen settings and your acetylene settings. And that's really all you would need to get started in doing this. Now don't get me wrong, I could take that number two and we started cutting this thing apart. But the problem is because it cuts one and two inch, one to two inch size uh, pieces of metal that thick, it's going to make a, a, a I guess you'd say a deeper and heavier cut. You're going to have more slag and it will cut, but it won't cut nice and crisp like a smaller cut wood. So that's kind of why it's nice to match the right tip size to the size metal that you're actually using. And I think that makes a big difference. Plus you won't be using so much of it if you don't need to use it. So I'm just trying to learn to do the, the things the right way and the tips are relatively uh, cheap. And uh, we're gonna go, I'll show you the different tips here in a second. So I transcribed uh, thickness and tip size, oxygen, acetylene from Harris website just to give you guys a basic understanding. And what you can see here is for 3 16 and less, the triple odd uh, size with oxygen between 15 and 20 and acetylene between 5 and 15. And you'll see the acetylene 5 and 15 pretty much going all the way down the line. If you stay around 7, 8, that's probably a good standard that I think that will work for most people as far as the acetylene uh, settings go. But you can see that the double zero is a 3 16 to 3 eighths. The zero is 3 eighths, 3 eighths to 5 eighths. The 1 is 5 eighths to 1 inch. And the 2 is 1 to 2 inch. And again, when you look at the oxygen and acetylene settings, if you stick within these realms, you won't have any problem whatsoever of getting a good starting point. And that's what I like about, you know, when you get to these manufacturers, you can kind of figure out, you know, what tip you need, what, what you're actually cutting, and what you should say your oxygen and acetylene at. And it makes a big, big difference. And I think it'll help out people down the line. So just check your manufacturer and go with the recommendations. And these are the ones for Harris. So here are two tips. This one here in this hand is a triple zero or triple lot. This one here is a number two. This one cuts about three sixteenths or less. This one here will cut approximately one to two inch pieces of metal as far as thickness goes. When you look at the two ends, the difference between the two are the holes that you could see and they allow the amount of oxygen and acetylene to come out and burn hotter and uh, do a better job cutting depending on what they're made for. So that's the only difference is the hole size makes a difference between you know each one of them. So I just want to give you an idea of the two the difference. So the best thing to do is identify the size of metal that you plan on cutting and then get the proper uh, size tip to cut. So when it comes to buying a tip, they're really not that expensive. I paid like 12 to 15 dollars for the tips that I have. 
Um, depending on the brand manufacturer, you're getting probably 15 to 20 dollars, probably on average. And uh, just make sure you get the tips that are made for the brand that you actually have. The other thing too is you want to get a cleaning kit so you can uh, clean the tips. And basically, they have a, they're like little wire uh, rods. They come in different sizes because of different tip sizes. And you get the one you need, and you can kind of clean out the holes as they start to get charred by all the, the heat and the uh, flame. And that'll keep your tips clean, and they'll run better, and they'll cut better. But those are the, this is the stuff that you basically need to get started. And once you have that, you're pretty much good to go. You know, like I said, you've got to refer to the chart. The chart tells you how much acetylene you should have, roughly, depending on the, the, the tip size that you're going to use. Same thing with the oxygen level. And that was my biggest concern when I first started is how much. So I went on uh, the Internet, just on YouTube, just like everybody else, and I've seen it across the board, a lot of different references. So basically the best thing I can tell you, in my opinion, is just to go online, get the brand that you have, find the tip size, and then I'll tell you probably through the company that um, you purchased your oxygen acetylene from what tip size to you know oxygen acetylene ratio you need and that's all you need to do just like the chart i'm showing you from harris once you have that at least you have a, a starting point and you can go on from there and uh, that helped me out a lot and i'm assuming if you do the same thing it'll help you out a lot as well plus you understand that not all tips are created equal and that's a big thing too i was watching another uh, youtube video who basically said that the double lot is probably the most common one that you're going to use and I have to agree with that because most of the time I'm going to be cutting, it's going to be about an eighth inch or less, and I figured that's probably the most common. But um, just plan for these types of things because um, you can't go wrong having a big enough tip, but make sure that you hit the right size, and I think it'll make you feel a lot better knowing that you're cutting the way you should in the most precise way possible, and you're optimizing your tanks. So if you're going to cut any piece of metal and you need to change the tip size, this is what you need to do. Grab yourself a crescent wrench. Um, all you want to do is get this thing loosened up. It shouldn't be on too tight. Unscrew it. Once it comes off, your tip should push right through this nut. And here you have it. And you can clean this off if you want. You can you know, brush it off. You can change the tip size. And when you're ready to put a different tip in or put the same one in, just set it right down in the unit. And then basically screw it right quickly back onto the torch itself. And once it's snug, basically you can take a crescent wrench and snug it up just a little bit, and then you're good to go. And the more you do this, the more you're going to be comfortable with it, and uh, it'll make your life a lot easier. Now, if your goal is to heat a large section up to bend it, you definitely want to get what's called a rosebud. And the rosebud was pretty pricey. You know, when you get the rosebud, you have to buy this unit, at least on my Harris, which is a, what they call a mixture assembly. And then you have this as the rosebud. And it's all it is is the tip that you're interested in. And you can see how flared out this is. This is going to use a lot of oxygen acetylene. You need to have bigger tanks. You can have a smaller tank. But this produces so, enough heat, and you got to make sure you have the right size tanks to run this. But this is going to produce enough heat that you can heat a larger area to, you know, making it cherry red to the point where you can actually, you know, have it break free if you have stuff that's sticking. And that's why we went to the rosebud. But, you know, this is like almost $200 set up between the mixture assembly and just the, this piece here. But they're well worth it when you're trying to get parts off. So it's just something you need to be aware of. And it is also makes this unit a little bit more effective because not only is it a cutting unit, it's able to uh, heat up in a large area and be able to help you extract it. And on a farm equipment, you almost need a rosebud because it's a bigger area. Now, if you're just trying to take off a small bolt that's broke off, you know, you probably won't need something this big. Um, but, you know, to heat that kind of area. But it's just something to have because when you really need it, you have it. So... I definitely recommend getting a rosebud, and it just makes your set uh, complete. You guys, thanks for watching. That was just a basic video of tip sizes, so you're kind of familiar with what's out there, how to find out what's the proper settings for your oxygen and your acetylene, and basically how to change a tip 
on the torch. Other than that, it's relatively very simple. And uh, I just wanted to pass that information on. We had something I learned. And I think it's good that you guys know out there as well. And just don't assume just because you got a tip on it that's the right one. And it's something that I did not know. And now I do know. And now you do too. So with that said, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.